Well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Make yourself at home. Have a drink. While I give some attention to some underappreciated characters and storylines that I personally love. And I hope you grow to love as well. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Today we're reading Swamp Thing number 103. But before we get into that, just a little catch up on the last couple issues. Swamp Thing has recently come back from getting all the ingredients needed to give his daughter a body again. So Swamp Thing, his wife Abby, a woman named Brenda, a shaman friend of theirs, and of course ghost baby Tefe had begun performing the ritual needed for Tefe to grow her body back. But unknown to them, Matango, the god of the gray, the lord of fungus, or whatever other titles you want to give him, he sent his main apostle after them inside of the house in the swamp and also possessed a bunch of other bodies and created a bunch of other apostles for him to control. And they all together went to go attack the house where this ritual for Tefe's body is going on. So once they attack, Swamp Thing has to split himself into two, which is a new power that he never did before. So that was kind of cool. And then he fought off the apostles, but unfortunately a hole blew in the side of the house during this battle. And the main acolyte of Matango was able to get his fungus covered leaves into the house and they land on Tefe's body as she was growing it, which of course corrupted the new flesh. So Swamp Thing had to rip Tefe's soul out of the new body before it got consumed by the fungus. And just as the main acolyte entered the house and Swamp Thing and him were about to throw down, in the background of this issue, there was a hurricane going on in Louisiana. So that hurricane actually blew in and hit the house and all the acolytes before they could overtake Swamp Thing and his family and friends. And that is where we left off on the last issue. So first things first, we got the cover here for issue 103. We see Swamp Thing and Abby are looking like they're about to kiss. There's like a weird white aura around them. It's like a close-up of their faces, so you can't see their bodies at all. And they are surrounded by many, many different types of flowers. And we also see on the cover that this is written by Doug Wheeler and art by Mike Hoffman. And we pick up here on the first page in the aftermath of the hurricane passing over the swamp. And of course, like the trees and stuff around the area are all broken and blown down, but also all the bodies of the acolytes that Swamp Thing was fighting and that were attacking have also been hit by the hurricane and they are not moving at all. So it seems like maybe Matango's spirit has left them. But there is one thing that stands out in this destruction, and there is a giant bean pod looking thing, maybe like a, a plant blimp or something like that, that is sitting where the house of Swamp Thing used to be. And as we zoom in on that, it looks like the top of it kind of either gets a hole in it or is pulled back on its own. And we can see that inside is Abby, Baby Tefe, Brenda and the shaman that were helping Tefe complete the ritual. And it seems like everybody was either passed out or just kind of disoriented while they're inside of this big sack that Swamp Thing put around them to protect them from the hurricane. So everybody's kind of assessing the damage that was going on. Some people are wounded, like Abby has a hurt leg. And Brenda goes to look at it because she works at a morgue, so she knows a bit about human anatomy. And while she's looking at the leg, she calls out to the shaman who is named Naja Garjek, which is a name I don't say very often because it's very long and hard to say. But I will say it now because this is the last time I have to say it because it turns out that Naja Garjek is actually dead. And this is kind of messed up, but Abby asks, how could this happen if he was inside of Swamp Thing's body with the rest of them? And Swamp Thing says, perhaps I wrapped his section too tightly and he suffocated. Or maybe he was already dead when I reached him. The storm blew us about, and I concentrated mostly on protecting Tefe and you. And as he's talking, like, boards come up out of the ground. So, so Swamp Thing just cut boards out of trees or just grew boards somehow. And he makes a coffin for Najagarjik that just kind of builds itself around his body. And then Swamp Thing sucks that coffin down into the swamp. And when Brenda sees what's going on, she's not very happy about it. She says... You're just going to bury him like that? No words? Nothing? After he came down here to help you? And I should say that Swamp Thing has not grown a body yet. He's just a head that has formed on top of a stick. So Swamp Thing doesn't argue with Brenna. He just says, We haven't enough time now. Naja Garjuk said we need to take Tefe to a safe place. The threat to her is not gone. The hurricane destroyed Matango's followers, but perhaps not all. 
there are blind spots in the green that I cannot look into, similar to those that surrounded Matango's followers. And as he's talking, Brenda has been looking at Abby's leg and sees that it's not broken or anything. It seems to just be a sprained knee. So instead of growing a body, Swamp Thing is still just a head on a stick, but where Abby's laying with her leg stretched out, Swamp Thing grows two arms and kind of sets them in place and holds them down and proceeds to make a splint for her so that she can stand at least. So because Swamp Thing cannot see Batango's followers, he knows that Tefe is still in danger. So he suggests that they should bring Tefe to the Parliament of Trees in the Amazon because they can protect her from the power of Matango. And Abby is not happy about this. She says, how could you even consider handing Tefe over to those bastards? And who is Matango? So it seems like Abby's pretty out of the loop here because I don't know, we've been battling Matango for a couple issues at least. But I think this is more of a chance for the writer to get some exposition across to the reader. So Swamp Thing actually breaks down Matango for Abby slash us. And he says, He is the ruler of the gray, of the fungus-based life. Those who attacked us belong to him. It was their leaves and molds that forced me to rip Tefe out of the body she was building. The parliament is the only place on earth with defenses against Matango. And Matongo is the force Naja Garjuk warned us of. They will help us. I can't transport you through the green, but I can carry Tefe there. It will only take a few minutes for me to leave her with the parliament and return here. And you and I can travel back to Brazil together by some other method. It is Tefe that Matongo wants, and he is too powerful for me alone to protect her. So as Swamp Thing is talking, Abby stands up and she is holding tight to Tefe's little ghost body. And while Swamp Thing is explaining all this to her, she, you know, looks down and begins to cry, but she knows what she has to do. She has to allow Tefe to be safe. So she agrees to let Swamp Thing take Tefe to the parliament. And before anything else could be said, Swamp Thing takes Tefe's spirit and brings her down into the green with him so they can go to the parliament of trees. And as they leave, Abby kind of whispers to herself, hurry back, Alec, hurry back. Tefe, I love you. And we see the name of this issue is called Exodus. So as she's whispering that to herself, we see in another area of the swamp, the head acolyte has awoken and is raising himself from the water. And this is the main one, the one that just has a human body that's gray and has branches coming out from where his head should be. So out of all the acolytes that could have survived, this is probably the worst one because he is the most powerful. And as he wakes, we do see something interesting on his branches. I guess maybe because he was in the water, his branches are starting to sprout little leaves. I'm not sure if this has too much significance, but they definitely show it on here and I'm not sure if it's going to lead to something else later. So as he rises, his narration says, Oh my lord, sweet Matango, so lonely am I. I feel your touch, your sweet numbing sting. The world is bare without the cloak of your presence, a dullness of colors without your splendorous gray. I have seen through your eyes and now am blind without you. Don't forsake me, my lord, my tears blown into the winds. And then we cut to the cavern where it looks like Matongo is, and it looks like Matongo is doing some sort of ritual because he's on his knees holding a cup, looking at a wall where there is a bunch of different bodies of the acolytes that attacked Swamp Thing's house and even a Swamp Thing body that has been discarded. And he's also seeing like a, a vision or something of a little star, kind of a bright shining light that is in the center of a bunch of fungus. I'm not sure if it's actually like a screen of fungus or something like that, but basically it's kind of like a window into the green and he is looking at the brightness of baby Tefe's soul. So Mutango knows where she is and his narration says, the green's latest child plays outside her shell. The glare of her existence must be dimmed and absorbed. Choose a sleeper to awaken from the chamber of dreams. So Matango goes to this chamber of dreams, which is just a wall of a bunch of the acolyte bodies and also a couple of Swamp Thing discarded bodies uh, that are just like tied to the wall of this cave by a giant root system. And he goes over to one of the Swamp Thing bodies and he looks at it and it begins to animate as he takes it over. And then we get some panels of Swamp Thing and Tefe in the green. And this is like an interesting way of showing it. They show it kind of like it's an undersea world where he's swimming through the green, but it seems like it's much slower than he's ever traveled through the green before. 
And like I said before, Tefe is being watched by Matango. So we see Matango's narration say, The child is headed towards the heart of the green. You must stop her and eat her. And then we cut back to the cave where we see Matango is talking to this animated Swamp Thing body. And that body has pulled itself off the wall and is now standing in front of Matango. And Matango has that cup that he had earlier. And he's handing it to this animated body. And he says, drink our minds, drink our knowledge so that you'll know what you must do. Then bring her before us. So as Swamp Thing is swimming through the green, he and Tefe are kind of floating over these things that look like sea anemones. And out of nowhere, an arm reaches out and it's the gray arm of the reanimated Swamp Thing body. And it grabs the leg of Swamp Thing. And Swamp Thing lets go of Tefe instinctively because now he's got to fight this thing. So Swamp Thing turns around and he actually says who out loud. And the reanimated Swamp Thing body says, don't you recognize your older brother? Or didn't the parliament tell you? And then while Swamp Thing's struggling with him, we see Tefe has gotten too close to some of the other sea and enemy looking things, and her little caster spirit is being pulled into them as well. Like the arms of the anemone are actually wrapping around her. So Swamp Thing sees this and he yells out for Tefe, but he can do no more than that because he is now sinking deeper and deeper into this anemone. It's pretty much acting like quicksand where the more he struggles, the more he goes into it. And finally, he actually does get pulled into this anemone. Then we cut back to Brenda and Abby who are just hanging out in the leftover bits of the pod that protected them from the hurricane. And in their talk, Abby is apologizing to Brenda for Swamp Thing having dragged her into this mess. But Brenda's like, don't worry about it. It wasn't Swamp Thing. It was actually John Constantine and you know how he is. And I think this is kind of like the first time I've ever had a chance to talk to each other because before this, she just appeared randomly a couple issues ago and said that, oh yeah, John told me to help you guys out with this ceremony. So I don't think they've had much time to get to know each other. And as they're talking, in the background, we can see the body of the head acolyte of Matongo and it's walking towards them and they cannot see him. And this is where I guess those leaves that grew on his head come into play because I believe the leaves are like his eyes, but they also blow off of his head all the time and that lets him be able to see in multiple places. But that also gives him away because all these leaves are blowing everywhere. And Brenda notices them go by just in time to see the acolyte get to the pod. And the acolyte thinks to himself, mother of flesh, her womb might bear more of these children of the green. I could assure my redemption by shattering her now. But as the acolyte begins to approach, Abby, who is standing up, kind of gets off balance and she falls backward and she grabs onto the nearest thing to try to give her support. And that thing was the discarded head of Swamp Thing that was on the stick from his body before he left to go to the green with Tefe. And it does snap off at the neck. And so Abby's just holding Swamp Thing's head. And upon seeing this head of Swamp Thing, the acolyte stops and does not move forward. So Brenda comes up with an idea when she sees this and she says, I think it's afraid of your husband's head. Throw it at him. Let's get out of here. So they do that. And now Abby has to run on her injured leg, but that's better than being attacked and killed. So then we come back to Swamp Thing and Tefe, who are now stuck and tied down inside of this anemone. And I will say the anemone isn't attached to the floor anymore. I'm not sure if they're still in the green or if this is the gray but the anemone that they're in now is just floating in the water around them. And I say water because it still looks like the green did where there are like sea life creatures and stuff, but it's supposed to be the green. And as Swamp Thing wakes up, he sees where he's at. He's kind of tied up, like I said, against the wall of the sea anemone. And he sees the reanimated body and he says, where are we? Who are you? And the reanimated Swamp Thing body says, I am a reflection of Matango. And Matongo, in part, is a reflection of me. I am one cell in the body to which you both shall soon be joined. And Swamp Thing responds, You said you were my brother. And this is where we find out that this reanimated Swamp Thing body isn't a body of our Swamp Thing, like a discarded body. It's actually the body of a past Swamp Thing. So the reanimated Swamp Thing says, That I was, and I shall be again. Two lives ago, I was Alan Hallman, working on a formula to repair damaged crops when the parliament chose me as their new host. And Swamp Thing is confused by this at first because he says, I was told that Alex Olson and Albert Hollerer were my predecessors. And the reanimated Swamp Thing says, but the green always has a guardian. Did you not wonder of the 30 years between Hollerer and you? 
Soon, though, the Parliament will have to choose again, now that we have liberated to the Grey's guidance both of their hosts. And Swamp Thing responds, My daughter and I remain part of the Green. And the reanimated Swamp Thing says to that, Soon that will change. Even now we descend towards the Grey, the presence of Matango growing steadily. The skin of this creature within those innards we reside has cut off your link to the green realm around us. Observe how it feeds from matter fallen from the green, bringing it inside its body to break it down and convert it into fungus, just as it is doing with you and the child. You will be dispersed like the rain of the particles outside until Motongo gathers your consciousnesses back together in his chamber of dreams. Then we come back to the swamp where we see the head acolyte of Matango is now looking at the skull that Abby had thrown at him of Swamp Thing's abandoned body. And he's realizing that this is not the actual Swamp Thing, that he was tricked and there's nothing to fear of this abandoned Swamp Thing head. So he throws it down on the ground and he continues his pursuit of Abby and Brenda. In the meantime, Abby and Brenda have been running and they find a derelict oil rig that was hit during the hurricane and has been abandoned. And they run to it hoping that it will have a working radio that they can call help from. Also while running, Abby finds another abandoned body of Swamp Thing and takes the skull from it, thinking that she can maybe use it again against the Acolytes if he catches up with them. So Abby and Brenda do reach the derelict oil rig, but when they get up there, they see that the radio is totally out of commission and it will not work. But they're hoping that because this place is mostly made of metal, that the Acolyte will not be able to have as much power in there because there won't be any fungus. And when Abby voices this opinion, Brenda kind of shatters her hopes by saying, um, Abigail, aren't some types of rust really fungus? And as she says this, we see the head acolyte has tracked them down to this oil rig and is fast approaching it. Then we come back to the fungus sea and enemy ship that is inside the green that is now captured Swamp Thing and Tefe and Swamp Thing's narration says, my body feels numb from this creature's toxins. My power has gone, cut off from the green. But there are other frequencies, neither green nor gray. Though they are weak, the creature's skin does not completely filter them. So upon realizing this, Swamp Thing begins to reach out with the different frequencies, as he's been known to do in space and other times in like the Rick Feach and Alan Moore run. And while he's doing this, the avatar of the gray that has them captured senses what Swamp Thing's trying to do, and he says, Resourceful. We do not recall a member of the parliament ever attempting that. But you have failed. Give up now and surrender your individualism to the Grey. But Swamp Thing continues to focus while the avatar of the Grey is talking, and Tefe senses what he's trying to do. So Tefe reaches out and puts her hand in Swamp Thing's hand, and this adds the little bit of power that Swamp Thing needed to connect with those other frequencies, and it causes the sea and enemy ship to rupture, and the whole side of it is blown open where Swamp Thing was against. And now that the sea and enemy body is breached, the green is now back in contact with Swamp Thing and Tefe. Then we come back to the oil rig where Abby and Brenda are hiding from the Acolyte's leaves. As we know from before, those are like his eyes, so he is blowing them throughout all the different hallways and door openings trying to search for them. And now that they're aware of the leaves, Brenda and Abby are coming up with a plan to try to get away from them. And Brenda is pretty smart because she looks around trying to find some way to stop the leaves from being able to find them. And she finds a fire extinguisher that is still full and not used. So as the leaves come through the door of the room that they're hiding in, she uses the fire extinguisher on them and it soaks the leaves with a chemical so that they will not be able to fly around anymore. But they know that that's just one part of this. Of course, the acolyte is still looking for them in his physical body. So Abby asks Brenda, don't you know a little magic? And Brenda responds, yeah, my grandfather taught me a few tricks, but I need a dead body to empower them. And then Abby thinks for a second and says, Brenda, this thing that's chasing us, do you think it might be dead? And Brenda says, good idea. Hope it's not too late. And as she says this, they round the corner. And of course, the head acolyte is standing at the end of the hallway waiting for them. And Abby still has that Swamp Thing skull, so she throws it at the Acolyte, trying to do the same thing she did in the pod earlier. But this time it does not work. The Acolyte is not fooled by the abandoned Swamp Thing head, and it just bounces off his chest as she throws it at him. So the Swamp Thing head falls to the ground, and the Acolyte begins to approach Abby, and he raises his arm to attack Abby. And as he does, Swamp Thing's hand comes out of nowhere and grabs the Acolyte, ready to attack it. 
And just as the big fight's about to take place, the body of the acolyte explodes, and you can see the bones from a human underneath all the fungus and everything. And Swamp Thing is shocked at what happened because he did not know that Brenda was going to be doing a spell. And we see the last panel of this issue is Brenda looking pretty smug and accomplished as she says, you were right, it was dead. So when do we get out of this swamp? And that is the end of the issue. So if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can email me at planes, trains, and comic books, all one word at gmail.com. And until next time, stay swampy. Thank you.